So Judas and Peter are operating by the values of this world. And Jesus, in contrast, is leading a, a revolution of love. You would think a leader like that would deserve uh, faithful followers, dedicated friends. How did the disciples do that uh, evening in the garden? Mark tells us, verse 50. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was seen following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Everyone deserted him and fled, Mark says. He calls them everyone. He doesn't call them disciples because they aren't behaving as disciples. Peter, the rock, the others, all of whom had been with Jesus for these years. As soon as the pressure's on, they desert him. Mark tells us of a young man desperate to get away from the arresting mob. Whenever they try to grab him, he slips out of his clothes and makes his naked escape. In the Bible, nakedness usually has to do with shame and disgrace. Kind of appropriate, isn't it? In this case, this young man, whoever he is, he's a coward. Some scholars wonder whether this might not be Mark, the gospel writer himself. He would have been a young man at this time. If it is Mark, then I think he's throwing his lot in with the rest of the disciples. He's basically saying, yeah, I was there too. And I was as bad as the rest of them. Everyone failed Jesus. Everyone failed Jesus, but Jesus didn't fail us. In the face of a gang with clubs and swords, he's standing firm. Actually, as we discovered last week when we thought about Jesus uh, considering the cup, Jesus is facing something much worse than a, a physical sword. Think for a moment about the first time we learn about a sword in the Bible. I wonder if you can think of it. If you've got it well done. It's when Adam and Eve first sinned and they were expelled from the garden and they turn and they look back towards the garden and they see an angel with a flaming sword guarding the way back to the tree of life. You see, when we sin, we're cut off from God. There's no way back. The only way back is if somebody goes under the sword of God's justice. Whenever Jesus in the garden was considering the cup and facing the sword, he did all that for Adam and Eve and for you and for me. Everyone failed Jesus, but Jesus didn't fail us. He's going on to the cross. Folks, we've been talking today about two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Many of us like the sound of the kingdom of the God. We like to think of ourselves as kingdom citizens of that kingdom, but I wonder whether it would be truer to say that we're still citizens of this world. Let's face it, the world's value systems around power and wealth and prestige and recognition, they just seem so right. That's why we run after these things. Jesus' idea of poverty and service and sacrifice, it seems crazy. Has he not heard of survival of the fittest? His idea sounds like survival of the weakest. Whenever we take a really good, hard look at the life that Jesus invites us to in the kingdom of God, we can easily feel defeated. We can come to the conclusion that it's impossible I can't live a life like that. I simply can't do it. If you're thinking that way this morning, then let me reassure you, you're right. You can't do it. And neither can I. If we take a look at Jesus in the garden, taking the cup, facing the sword, and we try to make him into an example for us to follow, 
he's going to crush us. You see, Jesus is so much more than just an example to follow. He's a saviour who's saving us. Jesus was a revolutionary leader. He came to turn this world upside down, or probably better to say, to turn this upside down back the right way up, to restore a broken kingdom of this world into a beautiful kingdom of God. He's all about reversals. But the greatest reversal of all is the one that he achieved on the cross. On the cross, Jesus got what I deserve so that I can have what he deserves. He became poor so that I might become rich. The person who gets this, the person who really sees it, the great reversal that Jesus achieved on the cross, that's the person who's going to increasingly learn to live as a citizen in the kingdom of God. In these unsettling times in which we find ourselves, please don't make the mistake of putting your trust in the kingdoms of this world. Put your trust in the one true king who's turned this broken world back the right way up. Come and live with him in the kingdom of God.